What's up, everybody? Thanks, as always, for supporting the show. It would mean a lot to me if you would take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button to the Hoops Tonight YouTube channel, and then follow me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter so you guys don't miss any of our content over the course of this season. All right, let's talk some basketball. All right, moving on to my number three contender, the Milwaukee Bucks. Starting with you, Carson, are you lower, or higher or lower than you were on the Milwaukee Bucks before the season? I'm lower because they were my pick actually to win it all. I had them beating Denver in seven in my theoretical finals because I looked at this roster and I thought the one thing that this team has been missing consistently is that seamless, dynamic shot creator in the half court. And I thought there are very few guys who fill that role better than Damian Lillard. What I underestimated in that equation was how significant the step back this team would be would take defensively was because we are now looking at a team that is still struggling mightily with point of attack defense that is 20th in defensive rating and that really consistently struggles to stop anyone. I also think that because of just the increased trend we've seen of them getting smaller and less athletic in the backcourt, this has gone from a dominant rebounding team which they've consistently been with that huge front line with a bigger, more athletic, better rebounding guard like Drew Holiday to a team that is 18th in rebound rate. So just overall, that defensive ceiling has gone way, way, way down. And I don't see easy fixes on this roster. They're playing a guy like Andre Jackson more. He's doing a good job. Ultimately, he's not a dude who I think that you can lean on in a playoff run because offensively, I think that he's a guy who teams are probably going to ignore and he won't be able to make them pay. Marjan Beauchamp isn't a guy who's at that level. So that still needs to be addressed. And I think that the pipe dream of like an Alex Caruso is gone. I just don't think they have the assets to make that happen. I would be targeting a Quentin Grimes if I were them because New York is apparently looking to move him. I think that his value is at an all-time low. And no, that's not an ideal solution, but I do think it's an upgrade in terms of filling that 3 and D point of attack defender role. And then I have a couple other little concerns about Milwaukee. Like Chris Middleton has been trending in the right direction. He's playing more. I would say that he's uh, been good in his minutes. I just at this point am questioning can he play 32 minutes a game over an entire playoff run can he stay healthy can he be at the level that they need i still totally believe in him as a difficult shot maker and a playmaker i worry though a bit about the athleticism at his age the two-way impact the rebounding and dame i would say i've been a bit underwhelmed by just because he was coming off of maybe the best offensive season of his career and i thought this will be a great situation playing with Giannis, an awesome spot up shooting but I think it's mostly just a shot making issue with him. Like his touch shot making has been a bit off. He hasn't shot as well from three as we're used to. I still think he's a really good fit here. Defensively, he's not been nearly good enough, but offensively, I still think he does solve a ton of their issues and they've been a really, really good offense this year. The tandem of him and Giannis to me still gives them a real chance against anybody, but the defensive issues are more pronounced than I expected for sure. Yeah, I wanted to straddle the fence on the Bucks. This is kind of what I expected from Milwaukee. I am lower on the moving forward, and it is because of the defense. I wonder if we took Coach Bud a little for granted. Uh, I know it's hard stepping in as a new coach, but I don't really think uh, Adrian Griffin really has anything schematically or, or anything that they can do in-game. Uh, I think that really matters when it comes playoff time, and I also don't think they have the personnel. Uh, another defensive stat, the Milwaukee Bucks are once again uh, – the worst in the NBA at forcing turnovers. They've lowest turnover rate uh, defensively in the NBA. That matters to me too. Not only can they not get stops, they can't force big plays and get out in transition as easily as they used to. Uh, I think they need to make a move personnel wise. I think they have to go out and get somebody, but I don't really think this team can stop anybody that can get to the rack come playoff time. And that matters to me. Like I think that it would make a series against the Knicks competitive. I think it would make a series against the Miami heat competitive. Like, I think the Bucs, as great as they are offensively, and I agree with Carson, I would never count out a tandem of Dame and Giannis out from the finals. I think it's going to be a sweat against any team that Milwaukee goes uh, up against uh, because of their uh, issues defensively. The NBA season is in full swing, and when I can't get enough of the action on the court, I spice things up by betting on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the NBA. Right now, new customers can bet 5 bucks and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. I was looking at the lines for making the playoffs today, and you can get the Lakers at plus 115 to make the playoffs, and the Warriors, check this out, at plus 205 
to make the playoffs. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with code HOOPS. That's H-O-O-P-S. New customers can bet 5 bucks on the NBA and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code HOOPS. That's H-O-O-P-S. The crown is yours. I'm lower as well. I started the season with them at number two originally, and then I, I moved the Celtics over them. Mm-hmm. The point of attack defensive issues ended up being way worse than I even thought they would be. You know, Dame was a really bad defensive player in Portland, but I always cut him the slack because that just wasn't what that team did well. Like it was like it didn't even make sense for Dame to compete at the point of attack. They didn't even have a good back line defensively. But he's been like because I've watched so much tape on the Bucks this year, keying in on their defense and like Malik Beasley's trying. He really is trying. He's just mm-hmm. he's just a little he's sm- he's a little small. And then like one out of every four possessions, he'll make a mental mistake of some kind. Mm -hmm. But like he's trying. But like Dame could give a shit, like for lack of a better term. He some of the most embarrassing defensive clips I've seen from a guard this season have come from Damian Lillard. And I'm not sure if that's one of those things where he plans on gearing up when they get closer to the postseason or plans on making those efforts when he gets there. But they need to be transcendently great offensively to make up for the, the defense that they have. Now, the def- mm-hmm. the offensive metrics they put up have been good, but there have been some stretches, particularly at the end of games, where they get a little indecisive about what they want to do. There's still some stuff with the Dame Giannis pick and roll where I feel like they're leaving some meat on the bone. Mm-hmm. There's still some stretches where you can tell Chris is like, hey, why am I not getting the ball more? Or Chris has the ball and you're like, hey, why isn't Dame involved in this sequence mm-hmm. right now? There's still some stuff that they have to sort out. On that front, and then there's just some bad vibes. Like this team is what 28 and 12 or 28 and 13, something like that. They have the third best record in the league, and they just have these lifeless efforts on some mm-hmm. of these nights where you're like, What is going on with this team? Which is almost it's just weird to even imagine a team that's a bottom 10 defense that has the third best record in basketball. Like it almost doesn't even make sense. Now, yeah, the I like the idea of Quentin Grimes because I do think that he is a much, much better point of attack defender than Malik Beasley. And if they get somebody like that, I think that could go a long way towards helping their their issues. But I keep coming back to this, and this is my major concern. They're slow. Yeah. Whenever Giannis isn't out there, they are a slow team. Mm-hmm. I don't know if either of you guys managed to catch that Cavs game the other night, but like... They got boat raced, mm-hmm. and they literally looked like they were stuck in the mud. It literally looked like, uh, it looked like when I was in JUCO, and every once in a while at the beginning of the season, they'd schedule like a bunch of dudes in their thirties to come play in an exhibition game because they needed to fill thirty games on the schedule. And so we'd play like I remember we did this in Utah. We we played like a team of a bunch of like dudes from like Salt Lake City who like came down and played against us who were just like former college players, but we were just so much faster. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's that's that, that's literally what it reminded me of watching that game. I'm like, holy crap! It's like they they are just standing around. They look like shocked by the speed of the Cavs and they're just running it down the other way in transition. Obviously, Giannis didn't play in that game, but that's the concern. Is outside of Giannis, they just don't have a lot of team speed. <laughs> 